Every gamer has their little likes and dislikes, preferences, etc. But there are DEF CON 5 scenarios that unite us all. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 Nightmares of Every Gamer. Starting off at number 10, a corrupt save file. Now, it does not get much worse than this. You know exactly how it goes. You're playing a game, everything's going smoothly, and suddenly something happens, like the power goes out, you hit some kind of random bug, the game shuts down suddenly. You turn it back on, but whoa, ho, ho, ro, ro, your save file is just gone. It, it just sucks so much. You lose hours of progress because of a stupid glitch or outside power failure, whatever. And you know what? In the days before auto save, some people just saved in a single slot, didn't save a backup. I did that for a while in uh, Final Fantasy games way back when. That's when I learned that lesson. Because it, it, if you didn't save a backup, you would lose the entire game file. Like, if you've been gaming long enough, you've experienced this particular scenario. Uh, you're playing like a long RPG or something like 30, 50, 100 hours plus. Like I said, I learned this lesson playing Final Fantasy back in the early 90s. And you're like right before the finale or even three quarters through. You've done just a ton of work. Your save file gets deleted and you're back to square one. All that time totally wasted. Now, it does provide a decent excuse to use all of the knowledge you've accumulated through the experience, but it's not enough. It doesn't make it feel justifiable. It didn't matter 100 hours worth, did it? <laughs> no, it did not. The worst part is there's only so much you can really do to prevent this sort of thing from happening. Sure, you can back up your saves and upload them to the cloud, take every precaution possible, but eventually it happens. Technology is imperfect as those who created it, and there is no perfect human. And yeah, it doesn't always totally reset your progress, but it's still a nightmare having to replay a long section of the game just because of a bug or an accident of some kind. And number nine is broken controllers. Now, compared to losing potentially hundreds of hours of progress, a broken controller, it doesn't sound that serious, does it? But one major thing to take into account is that if a save file goes bad, you can start the game over again. But if a controller starts crapping out on you, then you got two options, sending it back to the manufacturer for repairs or buying a new one. And whew, controllers are not cheap. Like there's probably nothing more frustrating than having to buy a new controller. And there's no guarantee that one's gonna work. I mean, it should work. It's new. There's a good chance it will work, but I don't think anybody listening to this has never bought a brand new controller that didn't work right. Even in some minor way that was tolerable, it happens. So then you're back to option number one, sending it back to the manufacturer, and that is a nightmare all of itself. Yeah, in many situations, controllers get repaired free of charge, but wow, does it ever take a long time. It's kind of a damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of situation. If you end up having to send it back to the manufacturer, you gotta wait weeks weeks on end just to get the controller back for repairs and it's not guaranteed to work even then. Remember what I said about technology being as imperfect as whoever made it? That's where we are with this. I have seen so many horror stories of people sending their Joy-Cons back to Nintendo, having it gone for weeks, and even getting like a replacement controller back, and it having Joy-Con drift. All you really can do is send it back again and hope you win the lottery this time, and the controller you get back, whether it's the one they repair or just a replacement, uh, that it finally actually works. The worst thing about this is that it's basically unavoidable. Video game controllers are complex, delicate pieces of equipment that, just like all things in the world, are not permanent. They will inevitably start to break down. There is wear, there is tear. So we're always going to have to deal with broken controllers at some point, and getting them fixed sometimes is worse than just giving up and buying a new one. It's expensive, but like I said, there's a good chance it will work. And number eight is game breaking bugs, which nobody likes, obviously. In fact, bugs at the general level, nobody really likes. Sometimes they're very funny, most of the time they're pretty benign, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the ones that are not just annoying, but pretty much ruin the experience. The most common game breakers kind of involve broken scripting at some level, whether it's event scripting or something fundamental, that make it impossible to progress. Like sometimes there's a workaround using the 
a console in a Bethesda game like Skyrim or Fallout 4, where uh, bugs are very common. Uh, but more often in games, there's just nothing you can do about the bug but just like know about it ahead of time and avoid it, which is not usually how bugs work. Like, and also sometimes it's just completely unavoidable. Like the infamous My Alibi bug from Arkham Origins, where it's very easy to get permanently stuck at a location in the main story. All you have to do is make the mistake of fully exploring this club area when you first enter. If you get hit with the bug, there's no backing out. You're trapped in the club forever and the only recourse is to restart the whole game. The other infuriating game breakers out there, a little less obvious, like sometimes like the final boss in the original Crisis is invincible. Like you might just think you're not fighting it correctly, but no, the game's buggy, uh, not just kind of. You basically just have to reset and hope the fight works correctly. Another really bad example is Far Cry 2's 27% glitch, uh, where the game just seems to stop at 27%. The NPCs you need to talk to just don't show up. That's that. They were like, oh, I don't want to be in a war zone. <laughs> Forget this. Like at least with save file corruption, you basically know what's going on. You lost progress. With game Game breaking bugs are so many ways a game can screw up that it's hard to even tell if you're in an unwinnable situation and it can make you feel like you're going crazy. And number seven is unreadable discs slash disc read errors. Like this is less of an issue with modern games where a lot of games aren't even on discs anymore, but if they're printed on like a Blu-ray disc, those discs are a lot more sturdy than the old school CD-ROMs. But again, you're probably not even gonna deal with that. If you go back to the Xbox 360 area or further though, you're pretty much gonna have to deal with what are kind of easy to mess up discs. It's another one of those issues where the actual cause of the problem can be hard to pin down. Sometimes the disc is dirty, sometimes it's damaged, sometimes the problem is the console's disc tray, or if you're in a particularly bad situation, the laser. But playing older games like PlayStation 1 or Saturn, yes, Saturn has games that are worth going back for. I've done it a number of times myself until they re-released Knights. That was the only way to play it. And holy hell do they need to release a Panzer Dragoon collection with the two main lines and the RPG. But if you go back to that stuff to play it, it's worse. Blu-rays are better than DVDs, which were tougher than CDs, and CDs were a nightmare. Any little imperfection can render a game totally unplayable and introduce these weird glitches to the experience. And sometimes no matter how perfectly you follow disc cleaning guides or how perfectly well you've stored them over the years, it's, it's not enough. These things are not good media to preserve data with. It's annoying when you're buying old games, but it really sucks if you've got a collection and you start noticing problems in games you used to be able to play. Disc rot happens. And depending on how you store your old games, it's possible they're already starting and break down. As somebody who really loved going back to older games, I listed the Panzer Dragoons, and again, unless they remake all of them, the only one I can really go back to easily right now is the first. There's just a, a, a little thought in the back of my mind that all of those types of games are just gonna eventually become completely unplayable. That's a nightmare unto itself. And number six is having your account stolen. Like, depending on the type of gamer you are, this point might be your personal number one. Everything we do in games nowadays is dependent on a few different accounts. Your identity as a gamer is tied up in a Steam account or a PSN, Xbox, whatever account. And if one of those things gets taken, it can be bad, like really bad. If you can't access your account, you pretty much lose everything. All the purchases, the games, the friends, it's all compromised, and you're pretty much stuck at the mercy of whatever support system you have to use to get your account back. Sometimes regaining your account's relatively painless, uh, but in my experience, it's usually not. It's frustrating and confusing, and it always takes too long. Like, it's bad when you lose your launcher or console account, but losing something like an MMO account can be way worse, uh, if only because of the personal connection you have there. Uh, people get attached to their characters in an MMO, and losing them can really be devastating. Uh, depending on who you are, having your account stolen can also be more financially damaging than having your house broken into. And number five, game bugs that don't mess up the game, but your PC. Some games manage to go beyond the basic annoyance of breaking your game and making it worse. They don't just damage your save or force you to reset, they could actually damage your PC. Like these are pretty rare ones, but when they pop up, they obviously hit pretty hard. One of the more famous examples is a game by Bungie, the developers of Halo. In 1998, they released Myth 2 Soul Blighter, which could delete your entire C drive, your main drive, if you installed the game in the root folder. 
If you think that was only a 1998 problem, then think again, because the original release of Deltarune Chapter 1 had the exact same problem where the uninstaller would delete the entire directory, just like Myth 2, and if you installed it at the root, that's it, that deletes everything, like including Windows. So from that point, it's pretty difficult to actually use the computer. Of course, it's possible to reinstall Windows at that point, so the computer's not like totally ruined, but everything you had on it's gone. Um, not the worst thing a game can do though, like allegedly some of them can actually Actually fry your graphics card during the beta of the new game new world it was this widely circulated story that the game was frying certain high-end gpus normally this isn't supposed to happen there should be certain fail safes that are meant to protect the graphics card from overheating but for whatever reason they didn't work and certain very expensive gpus got fried looking back i'm not sure if the game was actually responsible or if it was some kind of graphics card issue or what uh, the actual cause seems relatively unclear but either way i can't think of a gamer nightmare worse than managing the get a high-end GPU in the middle of one of the worst chip shortages of all time and having it die from playing New World at max settings. New World. What is New World? I'm kidding, I know what New World is. I'm just dunking on that game's staying power. And number four, failing school or getting fired from your job because all you did was game. Now, I don't think this is one that a lot of people experience. Most people play games responsibly. We don't usually let gaming get in the way of things that really matter, like school, work, relationships, but it can be tough to get the right balance. So it can actually be kind of scary. This point's more of a literal gaming nightmare, I think, because I think a lot of people worry about it. Like they get deep into something and maybe get out of touch with some people People for a period of time where their grades go down a little bit, but it doesn't actually happen all that often. If you look around like subreddits and stuff though, people often post about a recurring nightmare where people are not prepared for a test because they were up all night gaming, and that is a scary thought. Gaming's supposed to be fun, it shouldn't take over your life. No matter how many games expect you to treat playing them like a second job, they're not. I don't want to linger too much on this point because video game addiction is a real thing that does happen, and it's certainly not the fault of the person they build in addictive mechanics in all of these things and certain people are much more susceptible to that type of media coming in but for the most part it's a scary thought and nothing more and number three, when your favorite game closes prematurely. You never know how long a game's actually going to stick around these games, and there's nothing worse than losing a game you love because the publisher doesn't want to support it anymore. Now, sometimes this is something like a, an MMO that has active communities, like City of Heroes. Sometimes it's a gotcha game, like Dragalia Lost, where players devote a lot of time and money to play, but it gets shut down with little fanfare. But when a developer stops supporting a single-player game, usually no big deal, because at least you can still access the game. But when they give up on on a multiplayer game, nine times out of 10, that means the game is dead. Unless the community is big enough to support buying servers and going through the trouble of reverse engineering the game, they're usually functionally unplayable. Not that that never happens. If you've been playing games for long enough, this is probably something you've experienced firsthand. Games get closed down all the time, and while it sucks that it happens, if a game is online only or requires a central server, you're basically out of luck. That game is gonna be dead when the developer stops with it. City of Heroes, Star Wars Galaxies are the exceptions to the rule, not the rule. And number two, the red ring of death and or the blue screen of death. Dealing with bugs, losing access to a game, that sucks. But that's all a big load of nothing compared to one of these things. If you were around for the Xbox 360 generation, you know the red ring of death. The three flashing lights on the Xbox power button that indicated there was some internal problem with the system. If you saw the red ring, your console was unusable and all you could do is just send it in for repairs. Now, there are a lucky few that never had to deal with the dreaded red ring, but it was such a big problem that it ended up causing costing Microsoft over a billion dollars to pay for all the repairs. Now, they did it for free, thankfully, but it was also never certain a console would 100% work after the repairs. I sent in an Xbox three times in a row. Every time it got back, it'd still have the red ring. The Xbox 360 was hardly the only console that saw hardware failure, but the PS3 has its fair share of issues as well, like the flashing red light indicating a critical error, and of course the common PC error screen, the blue screen of death, the PS. SOD for the old farts among us, myself included. The problem with that is how vague it is. At least with the red ring, you knew your Xbox was just done. But who knows what's going on when you get the PC blue screens. Could be anything from a serious hardware error to a minor gain bug and everything in between. Actually, finding out the cause can be a painfully complex process. In the end, it doesn't really matter what color the error is. They all suck in their own ways.
And finally, at number one, having no idea what you did wrong when you built your PC. In terms of anxiety, stress, and frustration, there may be nothing else out there in the gaming landscape as miserable of an experience as trying to build your own PC and running into some kind of major problem. Building a PC is pretty easy to do nowadays. Uh, it used to be that you almost required a computer science degree, but these days it's it, there's step-by-step -step guides that basically anybody can follow. In many ways, it's easier now than it ever has been to make a custom PC, but there's still a lot of complications along the way. First, everyone makes mistakes, but the issue is that you're building a complex computer. The components for this thing are costly, and that makes a mistake potentially costly. PCs are not cheap, especially if you're building an enthusiast computer with some massive graphics cards in it. These kinds of builds easily cost two grand or more, and that's not a small expense for most people. So it really can suck when you take the time to put it all together, turn on the power in, nothing happens, or like it runs super slow. You gotta diagnose a problem, that involves checking every little wire and connection and slowly peeling back the layers of the PC to find the point of failure, and that can just take hours, sometimes even days. Even if you do find the problem, oftentimes you have to deal with customer service to replace something that is messing up, and that's not fun. But the the worst version is not being able to figure out what the problem is. Like you go online, you find everyone has a different and contradictory answer for what you should do. Nothing you try works and you have no idea what the problem is. Basically you spent all that money and the thing is just wasted. You have a big brick sitting on your desk as a trophy, I guess. Uh, that's a pretty extreme scenario. A lot of people do get past this, but there are horror stories from people trying to build a PC that make that result sound not far-fetched. It can be a lot of fun to build a custom PC, but but it can also be an absolute nightmare. That's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription. So click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at Falcon Hero. We'll see you next time right here on Game Ranks.